First of all, thank you so much, RJ, uh, Denise, Liz, for inviting me to come and join you here this evening. It's just wonderful to be here and to see this building completed. It looks amazing. So straight off, really amazing job. Congratulations. It, it's so nice to see such a caring job done and, you know, taking that time to research the details and take care and, and restore it. Um, I'll just say a little bit about the building. I mean, I'm sure everybody here knows things about it, but it's been here since 1935 as a landmark in, on Laguna Beach, um, designed by James Conway for the Camp family in the Mediterranean revival style. It's gone through a number of owners and a number of changes, including a very controversial division down the center of the room uh, where it was two, uh, split into two auditorium spaces. I'm very pleased to see that you've rectified that and it's back to one, one space. Um, and unfortunately it closed in, in 2015, which is, was very sad. Um, I'd like to ask you, how did you find the building? And you know, what state was it in back then? And what made you think this was a right fit for, for you guys? We saw this building, it had a for sale sign on the marquee. We had at the time been looking for what are incredible, unique ways that we can bring our products and our brands to people and connect with people one on one. And so we thought a theater would be an incredible way to do that. And then it was 2020 and a theater was maybe a less incredible way to do that. Um, um, but we persevered through it and it really for us has become a chance to reconnect with the city of Laguna, with employees, with customers, with our community and we're just really excited for it. Um, but it has been a journey and we can take you on that journey. It's, um, it's great to see um, buildings that are falling into decay and, and um, unused buildings actually get restored. I think there's, there's nothing um, worse for a community to see architecture decaying, and not only for the building itself, but um, also, you know, also for the community. And, and so I'd like to ask you, um, do you feel that it's actually the responsibility of architects and designers to take these projects on board? They are challenging projects. I mean, let's face it, it's, it's not easy to take a building like this and restore it. But how do you feel about that? Sure. When we first found this building, um, it had been closed since 2015. And even prior to that, I think I think they found out the roof had been leaking for something like 40 years. Um, and it had flooded regularly. And it was in disrepair. Um, so it, to your point, projects like this are not easy projects. It's not the easy path. It's not the clean, simplest road that probably would be to demolish something like this. But to do that, I think, is to be um, remiss to see the beauty of what was here before and also just what, I mean, we are all architects and designers, so we might be biased, but the way that space can bring people together and that can transform people's experiences and the way it can really allow people to resonate with your brand, with your product, with your people, um, you wouldn't have gotten that in if we had taken the easy approach. Yeah, I think mentioning about the people as well, uh, I thought it was a nice moment tonight when we were talking, you said it was lovely just seeing people in the space. And I think as architects, we always remember that these buildings are about people and they're about people occupying them. And I think there's also, um, particularly with this building, the community, the sense of community around this building is, is huge. Um, I personally feel it's wonderful that you're back to having uh, a movie screen in here again and that there will be some, some movie screens. But I, I wanted to ask you about um, the community and sort of any, any help or encouragement you had and, and how it felt uh, doing this project with the community. Yeah, this was a huge community effort to bring this space back to life. And and when we knew we wanted to be here, we knew we wanted to build community. We we didn't know how we were going to do that. And it, really, it started with listening and conversations and learning from, you know, the city and the people within, like how we could start to do that and um, what meant most to them and all of their memories that they had in this space and how could we how could we bring that back for them and then also figure out how to layer on like how does Rivian kind of sit within this space and so um, it was a really fun research and concepting and creative endeavor to to figure that out over the years. 
And I think it's going to be really exciting to see how this space grows and evolves as the community comes in, as we have more and more connections, as we put down deeper roots. Like we feel we've created a canvas. I think we were talking with Sarah earlier and she's like, you've made a beautiful container. And that is exactly what it should be. It should be a place that the people bring it to life and the programming brings it to life. <clears throat> and we were just lucky to be a part of that. Um, I did actually uh, mean to ask you about any sort of challenging moments uh, in the construction. Um, we are very close to the ocean. I'm sure the water table is pretty high. And I know from my experience with, you know, when you, when you come into these buildings, the state they're in and the work that needs to be done, were, were there any particular things that come to mind of, that were difficult? I think everyone loves to know about difficult things. So, <laughs> I mean, we, we would walk through this space and we'll let them show. This is what it looked like when we got it. Um, two theaters, literally a wall straight down through the star, through that historic star. Everybody was like, we don't need that. We're just going to put a wall there. And, um, <clears throat> and then you can see us trying to peel back the very disgustingly sticky curtains to find what was behind there. Um, we were like running our hands down things and just trying to feel because when we first toured, there were the lights weren't on, yeah. right? We had flashlights and we're like feeling what's and your what's your here. Feet stick to the floor. <laughs> I mean, and the team just did an incredible job persevering through challenges. Like you mentioned, very low water table. Essentially, we are completely under the ocean right now because the beach is across the street, and we're di we're digging piles down sixty five feet. And we found a well underneath where the elevator sits today. And that well required an archaeologist because it was it predated anything anyone had seen. And so the team just, I mean, they, they didn't let any of those challenges um, get in their way or deter them from, like, the mission of bringing this back to life. Um, and they really have been just, I mean, our team was incredible for that. I think, I think it's important to point out, and we see from those, those images, that there was a structural upgrade to the building. So again, restoring these buildings not only brings them back to life, but preserves them. Bringing it up to code, bringing the, the seismic structure up to code is so, so important, and it just extends the life of these buildings tremendously. We, we've talked a lot about this idea, of, for our spaces in particular, about what is in the wake of Rivian. And how can we leave things better than we've found them? For us, that, that is also a way to think about forever and think about what we do for our kids, kids, kids. I mean, I think quite often these projects are a bit like having kids. Uh, so <laughs> so I, we were talking earlier about um, how many of these projects do you have in your life? And it's, it's not many, but I think it's just such a wonderful space. It's so good to see it, see it restored. I was very fortunate that I, I actually worked on a very similar project in downtown LA. Um, we restored the Tower Theatre building. And, and again, it had been empty and disuse and quite frightening when we went inside. It really was like a horror movie inside. And we managed to restore it and, and convert it uh, uh, to an Apple store. Um, and it was a really enjoyable process. It was great to um, discover and go through layers of paint to find the original paintwork. It was great to clean all the nicotine off all the crystal chandeliers. You would not believe what we originally thought was brown glass ended up to be clear. <laughs> So, so it's uh, but it's just so good to actually, um, you know, particularly when a building doesn't can't necessarily function as its original intention, to find a new use for it and to adapt it and still keep it. Again, in, in the case of both these theatres, open to the public, people can come in and use these spaces and see them. They're not converted into private spaces. They're places for people to come. Really wonderful. I, I also do think that there is something powerful about something about movie theatres. Um, people have such an incredible nostalgia and memory for them. Like they build connections to to movie theaters in, in a way that people maybe don't necessarily build to a lot of other kinds of architecture. Maybe a library would be the only other thing I could think of where it's sort of, it's a place that has transported you to other places. And, and, and somehow, I mean, at least we found here, I mean, everyone in the community would come up and have stories about coming to visit this theater. I have memories of visiting this theater as a kid. And it's just... It's incredibly powerful to then see that thing be just brought back to life in such an amazing way. And I can only imagine, given how beautiful that theater is, I mean, the, the memories that people have there. And um, before I get to, to, to movies, I was going to ask you just this, this adaptive reuse. I presume this is 
is a uh, a strategy for other Rivian projects that that is your sort of forward thinking approach. Um, can you talk about any any things you've learned here, or any things you've done on any other projects, or any other projects that have taken the same approach? We love an adaptive reuse project. I think they tell such a great story, and the ability to really determine through the process like what is necessary for us to to layer on our programming becomes a an interesting constraint from a creative standpoint and um, we have a number of of projects opening next year actually that follow that same sort of story arc but I think we we learned how incredibly important it was to bring the community along with us on the journey and that's something we've we've taken forward and our next projects and and really making that part of our process, our design process, um, when we sign up for something like this, just to make sure that we have the community support along the way, the city's support, um, and 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 learning from them. I, I think that's invaluable, and it, it's probably the probably the biggest learning that we took from this project. In addition to the the well and and all of the structural. Look out for wells, yeah. <laughs> So um, I believe back in 2007, It's a Wonderful Life began screening um, here as part of the holiday celebrations. Um, first, I was going to ask, uh, you are going to be showing movies in here in this, in this, this thing, in this theatre. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the upcoming uh, programming that might take place. We are very excited to bring movies back to, to this theater and show them here and starting tonight especially. But um, yeah, we have a team that's dedicated to bringing programming to life here. We've partnered with the, the, uh, the Coast Film Foundation to do so. We are gonna be telling stories around adventure and we're also gonna be doing a number of family films as well. Families are so important to us, being able to bring them back, the nostalgia factor that Denise spoke of and, and how meaningful that is to this community. So um, films that sort of center around a lot of those themes are, are key to us. And yes, to It's a Wonderful Life as well. We're, we're, we're really hoping to bring that back here as well. I, I only mentioned that one because one which holiday season, so it's a classic. <laughs> um, but I actually think the story of It's a Wonderful Life is really apt here. You know, it's about one person making a big change in a community. And without that person you know the place is nowhere near as good and I feel like what you guys have done here by saving this building is is very similar to that approach just doing one really good thing really really helps so I think, I think one thing that we as a company have done very very well is em like embrace optimism and it takes a lot of optimism to take on a challenge like this it takes a lot of optimism to take on things like climate change and I think core to who we are is just this idea about like how can we help even in even in the smallest ways possible um, and this is a way that we can make things a little bit better for our community for our employees for our customers and we're just really excited for that I totally agree I think without optimism no design would happen you've got you've got to be optimistic to begin with to just say oh we could do this sort of stupidly optimistic yeah yeah so <laughs> much and, and and I think and then coupled with optimism is caring and just caring about what you're doing. It's, and, and that's really evident here and evident in everything Rivian does, but just being mindful and caring. So thank you so much. Um, I think you. we are close to time. So 